Hello everyone, Bhavya Desai from JM Tech Networks. So today we are going to discuss about CEH course content. Okay, the module is the sessions that are inside CEH course content provided by JM Tech Networks. Okay, so before going further, let me tell you one thing that JM Tech provide. I mean, we we provide notes, PPTs, PDFs, books, and all the recording sessions. Okay, of uh, like of uh, lessons, day to day lessons. So we will provide all the course material for the for your training. So don't worry about uh, like getting worried about your concept. Like if you are able to grab the concept or not, don't worry about it. We are there for you. Okay, so let's start. So this is the CEH version eleven course content. Okay, so let's see one by one before moving forward. Let me clear one thing. That is, cyber security is a domain. Okay, that is a field or domain. So, cyber security is a whole domain. Inside cyber, inside cyber security, we have multiple fields. Like we have parts. That is, we can say that first we have ethical hacker. Then we have penetration tester. Then we have forensics. Okay, digital forensics. Then we have red tumor, blue tumor. Then we have bug hunting, or we can say that bug bounty. Okay, and like uh, etc. We have many fields inside cyber security. So cyber security is a whole domain. If you want to kick a start your career in cyber security, then CEH is the right choice. Okay, so basically cyber security has multiple fields. So CEH will give you the idea about each and every field, like a little bit idea about each and every field. Like for example, ethical hacker. So CEH will give you the idea on what is ethical hacking, what is who are ethical hackers, what are the roles, what are the tasks performed by the ethical hacker. Okay, it will give you the idea about penetration tester, forensics, forensicators, red teamer, blue teamer, etc. So CEH is a starting like basic certification, very like it is very good for beginners, and it will give you the idea about the whole domain of the cyber security. Okay, so penetration tester are the one who who perform testing on web applications and websites. Okay, they only concern about web applications and websites. Forensic creators are the one who just perform the forensic activity, like they try and move data, backup move data from the broken phones or uh, like. Uh, Okay, like uh, tracing someone, some numbers, or uh, like uh, tracking the criminals. So these are the tasks of the forensic characters. Now, red teamer are on the attacker side. They just know how to attack. Okay, they just they are on the attacker side. They create payloads. They create malware. They perform the. They find the zero day vulnerabilities, etc. So these are the tasks of the red teamer. Blue teamer on the other hand are of are in the defender side. Okay, they just defend or protect your system, server, network, your devices, etc. from the malicious hacker. Okay, then we have bug hunting, bug bounty. They are like just finding the bug from the websites or from the softwares. Okay, so these are all the parts and we have many parts. Inside new demand, we have other parts. Let's say we have SOC analyst. In the SOC analyst, we have three more paths, that is tier 1, SOC analyst, and tier 2, SOC analyst, and then we have tier 3, SOC analyst. Okay, then we have SOC engineer, or we can say that security engineer. Okay, and then like uh, SOC analyst, security engineer, information security engineer, etc. So we have multiple parts. 
So after completing the CEH course or CEH training, then only after that, then only you will be able to decide in which path you want to move on. Like in which path you are interested in, in which domain inside cyber security you are interested in. Whether you want to go for a penetration tester, whether you want to become a red teamer or blue teamer or a software analyst, security engineer, or you just want to do bug hunting, etc. So after completing the CEH, then you will just know about each and every field, like what are the tasks of each and every field, like what are the duties, what are what we have to do in a particular field. After completing the CEH, you will be able to decide your particular path in the cybersecurity. Okay, so CEH, doing CEH is very important. Okay, to start a career as a beginner. Then we have, so let's discuss about the course content of cybersecurity. CEH. Okay, so first we have session one. In total, we have 20 or 15 sessions. Yeah, 15, 20 sessions. Okay, so first we have Introduction to ethical hacking. In this we will in, in this we will see like what are what like difference between ethical hacking versus hacking, who are ethical hackers, who are malicious hackers, types of hackers, phrases of hacking. Okay, like we will see cyber teaching and we will see attack life cycle, hacking concepts, rules, regulations, ethics, laws, standard. Okay, we will see all these modules inside introduction to ethical hacking. Basically, before doing any activity or before doing any hacking, we have to we have to ensure about what what is ethical and what is unethical. Okay, like what to do and what not to do. So that is very important. So before moving, like before starting the main concept, we will just study about what are the rules, what are the regulations, what are the ethics we have to follow before starting, before hacking into something. Okay, second, we have footprinting and reconnaissance. In footprinting, footprinting means information gathering, basically. So, session two, we have information gathering. Information gathering is the uh, same as footprinting and reconnaissance. Okay, so we can gather information on the two bases. Like, we, get, we can gather information on the basis of active footprinting and then passive footprinting. Okay, active like uh, active means directly and passive means indirectly that we will see. So footprinting concept we will see like how what is footprinting, how to perform information gathering. Then footprinting methodology, like what are the steps we have to follow by gathering the information. Okay, then we will see what are the search engines we can use for information gathering. Search engines like we can use Shodan, Webilizer, etc. Then web services, social networking sites, like how we can gather someone's information on the basis of social sites. Then website footprinting, we have image footprinting, like how to gather information on the basis of the mail, how to track mail and how to track the mail IP. Okay, then who is footprinting, DNS for footprinting, then with the network footprinting. Okay, these are related domain name system footprinting, like how to gather the information on the basis of the domain name. Then network footprinting, footprinting through social engineering, then footprinting tools, footprinting countermeasures, like how to protect yourself from, from like uh, rebuild, rebuilding your own credit issues. Then social engineering is like uh, manipulating the human beings to reveal all their personal information. So countermeasures is like how we can protect ourselves from social engineering attacks. Then we have the tools like like uh, we will see inform information gathering and reconnaissance tools. Third session we have scanning networks. Basically, networks are networking is very important for a cybersecurity domain. Okay, networks networking is like a root of the or the phase of the cyber security. Okay. So session third we have scanning for the networks. Okay. In this we will see network scanning concepts, scanning tools. Okay. In the scanning tools we will see Zep. 
Okay, was that we will see net discover, we will see NBEC, which is very popular tool. Okay, then we will see Nitto. Okay, so we have many tools that we will see. We will see rapid install tool and we will see the external tools. Then post discovery, port and service and discovery, port scanning and service scanning means the service which is running on the particular code with the version number. Okay, then OS discovery like operating system discovery like what which is which operating system is running on the on which app, which server or which system. Then scanning beyond IDS and firewall, and then draw network diagrams. Then we have enumeration. Enumeration is like gathering more information or gathering the information in the more advanced way. Okay, in that we will see protocol scanning like how to gather the information on the basis of protocol like we have LDAP, SMMP, NetBIOS scanning okay and then we have SMTP and DNS enumeration, NTP and NFS and we have IPsec, VoIP protocol, we have RPC, Unix, Linux, Telnet, FTP these are all the protocols and we can see like how to gather the information on the basis of these protocols and then the counter measures like how to put that ourselves Okay, from information gathering attempt. Then we have vulnerabilities analysis. In this, this is the main phase in the session five. We will see vulnerability analysis. Okay, so before moving forward, let me tell you one thing that is, we have five phases of hacking. Okay, phases mean methodology that we have to follow while hacking. Like in methodology in the sense, like a step we have to follow while hacking. Okay, so first phase is information gathering. Second phase is scanning. Third phase is gaining access. Fourth phase is maintaining access. And fifth phrase is clearing traces. Okay, so we have five phrases of hacking in the uh, like uh, five phrases of hacking. First, information gathering. In the information gathering, we gather the information about a target. Before hacking into something or before hacking someone, we have to ensure about three points. Okay, you have to ensure about three points. That is first your target, like the rules your target. Now your target can be a server, a system, a device, a network, etc. Okay, your IoT devices, voting devices, etc. So your target can be anyone or anything. So before hacking, you have to identify your target. Then second, you have to identify the motive. Like what is your motto before hacking? Like why like why do you want to hack into a particular system? Okay, so you have to define your motive. Why are you hacking? Like for testing, for any illegal purpose, for any legal purpose, etc. After that, you have to identify your tools. Like if you are hacking into a sub system, let's say you are hacking into a secure system. Okay, so before hacking, you have to like uh, check your to list that uh, even you have like before hacking into your system you have that particular tool for hacking or not like if you want to hack any secure system so do you have that tool available for hacking or not so you have to see that okay so before hacking into something you have to identify the target your motive and your tools whether a tool is available for hacking or not if not then you have to make your own tool okay and if yes then you can use that tool so information gathering is like gathering the information of, of your target. So in the session one, session sorry, session two, session three, and session four, we are doing information gathering. Okay, like information gathering of the network, of the service running, of the version running, of the target. Okay, like in different different ways. Then we have scanning. The scanning is like scanning for the vulnerabilities on the pools. Okay, scanning for the vulnerabilities. Or for the loopholes. So, vulnerabilities like 
and who is like if a system have some kind of bug or vulnerability so we can use that loophole to attack into that system okay so scanning is a very important phase like in that we will scan for the loopholes after that so in the session 5 we scan for the vulnerabilities we we will see many tools like we will see zap ovas zap then we will see web suit then and map net discover nitto and uh, etc okay so we have many tools then in the session 5 6 we will see system hacking like how to hack into a system see whenever you are hacking into anything the phases five phases are the same like uh, the steps are the same like first you have to gather information then you have to then you have to scan then you have to gain access means gain access me attacking into a system means real attack okay and then maintaining access like maintaining your access for a long time for example creating a backdoor here and then clearing traces whatever you did you are just clearing all the logs all the files whatever you just all your footprints okay so we have five phases of hacking so whenever you are hacking into anything the methodology of hacking is same like you have to follow the five step only and uh, but the step of uh, hacking will be differ and it depends on system okay so it's vary from system to system so system hacking means first we will see here like what are like how to what are the system we are going to hack, hack like we will see some labs and some real scenarios also and then how to gain access and like if you find found any password then how to crack the password with the help of we will see with the help of john the ripper tools okay john the ripper we have hydra you can hack to we can force the password with the help of web suit etc then vulnerability exploitation in that vulnerability exploitation means what are what are whatever the loopholes that you find in that system you are you are attacking on that loophole okay that exploiting privileges like in like you exploiting privileges like you enter in that system maintaining as you are maintaining your access for a long time and and after privileging exploit like after entering into a system you are just executing all your whatever your motive is you are just performing that like if you want to upload any malware if you are if you are stealing some information or if you are just checking whether the system is vulnerable or not so that depends okay then we have malware threats in the malware threats we will see what are the type of malwares we have how to create a malware and how to protect from malwares and we will see malware analysis like we have two types of malware analysis static analysis and dynamic analysis okay and like the counter measures how antivirus works how to create an antivirus so we will see in malware threats after that we have sniffing the sniffing is like sniffing someone's identity okay so we have is is sniffing means is sniffing someone's identity Okay, so in the uh, sniff sniffing phase, we will see the concepts, the MAC attacks, like how to spoof or how to change your MAC address, like temporarily. Then the SCP attacks, ERP poisoning. In that, we will see the man in the middle attack, how to perform the man in the middle attack. Okay, then we will see spoofing attacks, DNA poisoning, and we will see the is is different tools. We can we will use either cap, Wireshark, and many other tools. Okay, and then we will see the countermeasures like how to protect your yourself from the man in the middle attack, how to protect yourself from sniffing or being sniffed, okay, etc. And how to detect sniffing, whether someone is spoofing your identity, whether someone is inside of some malicious attacker is inside your network. So we have to detect it. Okay, then we have social engineering. Social engineering is like manipulating the human beings for. to revealing the all their credentials like your important credentials like okay so we will see the social engineering techniques like like we will see different types of social engineering techniques we will perform social engineering on the real life scenarios we will see how we can perform the social engineering through emails through websites through links through phone calls and through sms okay etc and how to protect from social engineering attacks 
in social engineering, we have to know about someone, some human psychology. Which is what we will see that. Then we have DOS attack. DOS means denial of service. So, denial of service attack. One, first we have DOS attack, denial of service. Second, we have DDoS attack, that is distributed, distributed denial of service attack. Okay, which means DDoS attack. Okay, so in DOS attack, DOS means suppose a system or a server is capable of handling. 100 requests. Okay. And you are sending 1000 requests at the same time. Okay. So a system is or a server is capable of handling 100 requests and you are sending 1000 requests to that server at the same time. So, so maybe the server can be, can crash or it can be like stop working. So this is known as DOS attack. You are just crashing the server so that the legit user or, or the general user want to access the information for on that server will not able to access the information because you have just crashed the server. And distributed denial of service like you are, you are doing the same thing but with the multiple computers like with the suppose our server is handling of uh, like capable of handling thousand requests or 10,000 or 1 lakh request and you are sending again 10 lakh request okay for sending 10 lakh request suppose you need 10 pieces so you, you just gather some some your some of your friends pieces or you just try the botnet attempt okay so you will see what is botnet so you are just performing the DOS attack or you are just sending the request from the multiple pieces that is known as DDoS attack, meaning distributed denial of service attack. Okay, so we will see how to perform DOS attack, how to perform DDoS attack, or and what are the attack and tools, what are the countermeasures, how to protect your server, your system from DDoS attack. Okay, then we will see session hijacking. Session hijacking means hijacking someone's session. Suppose you are just hijack someone's payment method like Google or suppose a user is running Facebook okay and you just hijack the Facebook session okay so you don't need any login ID or password for to get inside the Facebook account okay so you just need, need a session key or a token key that we will see later okay like how to perform the session hijacking attack and how to protect it from that and we will see the tools and techniques then we have evading IDS, firewalls, and honeypots. You will see what is like IDS. Basically, we have IDS, we have IPS, and then we have firewalls. Okay, so IDS means intrusion detection system. And IPS means intrusion prevention system. And then we have firewalls. So IDS means we are just an idea is a software which is like detecting the malware. If the malware is inside your network or inside your system, it is just detecting and informing you. IPS means it is detecting as well as informing as well as just protecting you. Like IPS is removing the malware also. So IPS means it is detecting as well as removing or preventing from the malware. Firewalls are like this. We have many types of firewalls. We have software firewalls, we have hardware firewalls, etc. So we will see that. And honeypots. Okay. So honeypots are like the traps for the malicious hackers. Okay. Traps for the malicious hacker. Okay, let's take an example. Suppose a server, a user one or the attacker one wants to hack into your server okay let's say your server one point one okay so attacker one wants to hack your server one point one so attacker one so and you as the owner of the server you know that uh, someone wants to hack my server so you create a honeypot or you set up a honeypot lab or a system honeypot is like it is the trap for the attackers like it is a Clone of your. It is a basic clone of your 
Dear server or system, okay, it is a clone and which contains which contains fake information. Okay, like which contains fake information that the attacker want to steal. So when the attacker enters in into the clone of a real server, like uh, attacker thinks it is a real server, but he or she enters into a honeypot. Okay, and Honeybot is like it will track each and every step of your attacker, like how the attacker is hacking or like entering into a system. What is the attacker doing inside the system, and what is the information it is stealing from the system? So all this process, Honeybot will report it. Okay, all this information the Honeybot will record it. So this is known as Honeybot. It is like a trap for the malicious hacker. So we will see how to set up honeypots in the system, how to set up honeypots in the server. Okay. And how to detect whether a server is a honeypot or a real server. Okay. And then we will see the countermeasures. Then we have the hacking web servers and hacking web applications. So hacking web servers, all the like whatever you are doing, whatever whatever system or website you are hacking, we have just we have to follow five steps of Hacking, like five phases of hacking that is information gathering, scanning, gaining access, maintaining access, and clearing traces. So, hacking web servers, you see how to attack in, for, in a server, how to, what are the web server attack methodology, what are the web server attack tools, countermeasures, etc. How to protect your web server from all types of attack. Then, you see hacking web applications. Okay, like uh, how to hack into a web application. So in the hacking web application session, we will see some different types of attack. That is, we will see client-side attacks. Okay, we will see server-side attacks. Okay, we will see SQL injection. We will see different, different types of injection. Okay, we will see like web services. Basically, a website is consists of front end and back end. Front end is whatever is happening on the user's PC, it is known as front end, like the designing part. Like when, when a web page loads on your system, that is known as front, front end. And when, uh, whatever, like, uh, whatever is happening on the back side, it is known as back end. In suppose you are filling a form and then you click on submit. Okay, so the form goes to backend and it is stored in the database. These all activities are performed by backend. So, so front end can be made from HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap, and we have React, JS, etc. So these are the libraries or the languages. From which the front end and the back end PHP, we have Laravel, the framework for PHP, SQL, the database language, MySQL, the database name. We have many databases. Okay, so the website technologies are HTML, CSS, the front end technologies, and the web back end technologies. And whatever is happening on the front side is known as client side. Okay, that is known as client side and whatever is happening on the back side on the backend side that is known as server side okay so we will see that then we have SQL injection SQL injection is a very popular tech and almost 50 percent of the website is vulnerable to SQL injection okay so we have SQL injection in the SQL injection okay we have to perform SQL injection SQL injection means that uh, you are dumping the database of a website. Okay, suppose you are running on a, you are attacking on an e-commerce website. And the e-commerce website, what is the uh, basic task of, a, of an e-commerce website? To buy the things or to sell the things. Okay, so you are just, if a user, if a ledger user is buying something, so all the information are storing on the database. Whether it is a card information, whether it is a username, password, the address, the phone numbers, all the information are storing in a database. So, SQL injection is you are just injecting the database. So, injecting we are dumping the data in the database. Okay. Of the database. 
that is explanation explanation is a very powerful attack so we have two types of we can perform injection like by two ways first automatic and second manual so we will see both and like how to prevent yourself or how to protect your website from SQL injection we will see that then we have hacking wireless networks in this we will see how to hack the wi-fi that and other things okay and then the countermeasures in the session 17 we will see hacking mobile platforms like how to hack uh, android android how to hack ios okay and uh, how to create a malware or payload for the android and ios in that we will use msf Venom, metasploit and many other tools then we have session 80 iot and ot hacking the iot means internet of things and ot means operational technology we will see like how to like what is iot and operation technology first we will see the diagram how, how they works and secondly we will see how to attack the iot and ot devices and how to protect yourself okay then we have cloud computing okay so cloud computing we will see like what is cloud computing how to hack the cloud servers etc then cryptography cryptography is like the concept or it is a process of securing your data okay it is a like a process of or a concept of securing your data inside cryptography we will see encryption we see algorithms we will see hash format we will see the digital signatures etc we will see the email encryption disk encryption how to encrypt your mails how to encrypt your disk we will see crypt analysis and pki public key infra etc and we will see cryptography tools like how we can encrypt or decrypt the data so these are the 20 models that we will be going to cover in the whole python oh sorry in the whole ceh training i hope you i hope you get the idea about uh, like what are the things or what are the sessions we are going to discuss so that's it for today thank you so much